Why are you beating up the trees? Unfortunately, the first part about lighting a fire is getting your firewood together. Now, the way my good friend Steve Wallace does it, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to cut your wood up like this. So I put a little compilation together with my good buddy Steve Wallace on how he lights a fire. So sit back, get yourself some popcorn, and enjoy. The mosquitoes are out, so time to start the fire. That should drive them away. Thanks, crazy Nate. Uh, I gotta get a fire going, kind of set up, and I'm using some cheater heaters to get uh, this place up to speed until the fire gets going. But there's gonna be some cheater heaters because I'm here for a good eight weeks. Back on the weekends to home, see the wife, and, uh, but in the meantime, This is what we have to do. Now I'm not a crazy bushcraft fire starter. I use pieces of wax and whatnot, but that's not what this is all about. I'm not a survivalist uh, bushcraft guy. I'm just a, a camper. It really sucks the air through these little guys. I got my damper opened up all the way for lighting it and for throwing wood in and anytime I have the door open so I don't smoke myself out. But I'm sure you know all that already. And in the meantime, let's uh, hey guys. Camping with Steve, we found our spot. There was some firewood here. We're gonna get a fire started because that's the first thing we want to do. It's been raining on and off. We'll get this going. Then we'll set up uh, the tent. We're using the ice fishing tent shack with the wood stove because it's gonna be below freezing tonight probably. So let's get started on the fire. So the generous wood that we've piled on top of what we used to clear up the campsite, we'll get that started here. <laughs> I hope so. Now you're camping with Steve. Yeah, that's the torch. In case you're wondering, it's a half a million BTU Tiger Torch. I bought it for $20. And left full open, that thing would run probably almost an hour off of a 20 pound cylinder. So there you have it. We're gonna start prepping dinner and do a quick tour of the camp. We're gonna get on the fire next. Okay, so one of the things I've learned about firewood, birch is my new favorite by far. It packs an energy wallop. Uh, the bark, is it burns like potato chips it's really unbelievable and uh, it uh, smells nice it's everything you want in a wood so I gotta get this started soon before we start to freeze up here so basically I'm not even chopping it into small pieces I got uh, my company training manual here I'm just gonna rip a few pages out of our company policy stuff and uh, We'll get that in there, 
you know, a little while back, I went to go start a fire with this stuff. And I figured, you know, I'm just going to put the torch underneath of a piece of birch and let it burn until the birch is burning. But my torch gummed up after just a few seconds. I pulled it out. The thing lit and it burned all night. So I'm not too, too worried. This is very easy stuff to light. And I'm not uh, a bushcraft guy. I'm not going to sit here and shave the log and uh, use sparks on it because it's as it's minus 40 with the wind chill, and I'll explain that later to people who don't know the wind chill. Uh, you don't mess around in this weather trying to uh, do a little bush crafty stuff. You just have to get warm. If that means dumping some lighter fluid on it, or like I'm doing here, a bunch of birch bark and uh, a small piece, and then another bark piece on there, I think that's really going to go. hope so because it's starting to get a chill. Been out here for a bit getting there all set up. So I honestly think this big of a cluster is actually going to burn and light for the night. So with the stove there's uh, the damper. I'm sure you can't see from that angle but uh, anything about wood stoves that you got to know if you're opening this door, open that damper. Just have to stay going, that's all I ask. Oh, uh, the heat feels good. Heat feels very good. Now, if it catches the bark, we are in business. And if not, I have to find some vitamin gasoline. Normally, I carry uh, some lighter fluid, and that really helps with uh, fires when you're in a hurry and minus 30 are usually in a hurry to get a bit of a fire happening but uh, seems like we've got some bark ignited which is all we need to get this party started and the fan works yeah the no kindling special just birch and that's all you need to get her started. Okay, so now I've got some good roar going in the fireplace and uh, a lot of firewood. Get this really started up here. I'll take the edge off. I'm gonna hurt myself. That's okay, well. Okay, wow. Beavers, beavers, beavers. Nothing but beavers around here. Uh, I thought we'd hit the jackpot with all this firewood here. Um, but then I saw the beaver there, and I feel bad now. We're just burning poor thing's retirement fund. I picked up sparklers. Now, I've lit a fire every way I can think of, other than uh, 120 uh, king-size sparklers all attached together. Look at that. Ooh. One of them wasn't very impressive. But maybe the remaining... 119 of them will start the fire. You can really smell the chemicals coming off of this. Oh boy. Oh! 
So I picked a spot here with the bathrooms. Great. The bag of pellets is 100% uh, softwood, low ash, which is good. High BTU value, I like. Not for human or animal consumption. All right, uh, and 40 pounds, $5. Oh, I really hope this works, but uh, we'll, we'll give it the try. Otherwise, I'm gonna be cooking on the hot plate tonight. It's, uh, it's kind of roaring, not just coals, but uh, still some wood in there, but I am going to throw in some of these pellets and see what happens. Uh, there's no wax or anything in these, it's just compressed wood, so I don't see why it shouldn't burn. be interesting, but uh, when I close this, that'll feed the draft underneath of the pellets, and we'll check in a sec to see if they're they're igniting. I guess these don't normally flame, they just kind of turn into coals and, and burn. This seems to be liking them. These, uh, these pellets have started an inferno in here. I'm even scared to open the door, but uh, yeah, the pellets, uh, they're engulfed in flames. They're burning quite well. I'm just going to keep uh, topping it up with pellets, and I think I've saved a lot of money here. I barely scratched the uh, bag of pellets, and I think from now on, I'm a pellet man. The fire is stabilized, and I just have to show you guys this. These pellets they just smolder and burn like coals. It's perfect. They actually provide a very even heat. Uh, not like the ups and downs with uh, normal logs. So I'm going to cook on this thing and I'm going to top it up with coals here. But uh, I think this is the way to go in this type of stove in this situation if you don't have access to free firewood. Shield some of that... Uh some of the flame from the road. That's a little better as long as the smoke isn't as much of a heat score as the flames are. See what I mean? This is way too much work. And on today's episode of Don't Do Anything Steve Does, get this thing going. Five squirts of mystery hand sanitizer. Find a lighter. And we'll see if that does the trick. Get the draft going here. And I'm hoping for good news. Very good news. Hand sanitizer is a perfectly viable option for starting at least a wood pellet stove. And it would probably work on uh, a bunch of good dry wood as well. Fire time, everyone. Now, I've got dimensional lumber offcuts because I'm doing some work on a house. And we've been doing some framing, so I've got some of this good dry stuff to burn. I'm not really splitting it up too much because I want to try... Using chips is a, I've heard about this, you know, oh, use chips, they burn, they burn just great, so. Let's see how many chips can start a fire with. I don't know. Better work, I don't know if I have much of a backup plan.
Oh, they burn. They smell pretty good. <laughs> I don't see why that won't work. But yeah, I guess in an actual survival situation, you should probably eat the Doritos and try starting it the old-fashioned way. But it works. And uh, keep getting this set up. I'm going to just warm up a little bit in here because this fire is nice. I actually have to have the door open. It's that warm in here. Time to start a fire for the night. And it's uh, important to have the fire going prior to it getting dark. If you actually have to be looking for, for firewood and trying to start this in the dark, perhaps it's rainy, it's just not going to work out really well for you. So we'll feed a little bit of the wood on here. Hopefully, this will burn without having to use the. Uh, the million dollar stuff we got from the store, but there's pieces everywhere I'm going to throw on here. And, yeah. Now you're camping with Steve. I, I gotta get Why are you arc, beating so up the trees? I'm trying to unstrick the axe. Butane stove. Let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, that sounds. Ow! Okay. Don't mind about that. Uh, we'll figure this out. But that looks a little more reasonable. Okay. Good. Oh, beautiful. First things first, though. I got to bushcraft a fire. up some firewood there we go a couple of big chunks in here okay. so Hopefully these big ones will, will light properly. That should get it going. Now you're camping with Steve. Hey, it looks like it's gonna go, but just to be sure, I've thrown in some garbage from the car and some of these zip fire starters. Can't go wrong with a few of them in there. And definitely want to be nice and warm in these cold weather conditions. Oh yeah. Now with the fire going, it's time for a well-deserved step two. Yum yum. Mm. Time of year, I don't even need a cooler. I just leave stuff out in the snow. Actually, I have to put hand warmers in my cooler to stop stuff from freezing. Fire time.
one thing to keep in mind if you're trying to light a driftwood stump on fire is how much mud and um, water is actually in there. So we're going to go with what I think is called a top-down fire. I've seen a few bushcrafters do this little trick. And uh, if this doesn't get her rocking, I don't know what will. That's a start. Looks good. Nice seasoned firewood. This will do the job. Stuff is coated in lichen and moss. Uh, you can just snap it with your hands. Don't even need a, an axe or a saw. Just the way I like it. Alright, so I think that's enough work for the day. Um, we'll be cooking on here later, so I want to get a bed of coals. Um, would you care for a step to uh, value beverage? Crazy mm -hmm. beer? I meant to value. Um, beer. Thank you. Yum. No name beer. Hmm. It's not as offensive as its price point would suggest. No, it's um, not bad at all. No, for a winter camping beer, uh, it gets uh, three thumbs up from me. Mm hmm. Crazy. Can't even get close to this fire, but uh, of course, we got the Alberta Cluster fire going right now, which is great. And. Brown up a little beef right out here under the stars. Oh, yeah. This was poorly thought out. Holy. <laughs> Where's the gloves? I gotta. Okay, I'll go grab a glove. We'll pull the pot off and then we'll put the meat in the pot. Yeah. Okay. I got some, some beef in there. That's good. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, it's just burning me. Oh, this one just about goosed me. Holy. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Oh. I think I lost all the hair on my knuckles here. <laughs> there you go, Steve. Some gloves. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. In the flashlight. Okay, we're going to try to salvage. Oh, man. The smoke's getting my eye too. Holy. The worst outdoors chef in history. Whoa! All right. Yeah. Okay, let's try to adjust the fire, maybe. I'll stir the beef up. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, that'll look good. Good. Yeah. Brown up the beef, of course. Uh, then we throw in some onions and. The rest of all this goodness. There's a nasty knot here. I should have started from this side. Let's try this again. This is how we stop me from screaming, oh my thumb. Great. Now I got the axe stuck again. This is why you need to learn, to learn how to light a fire without splitting all your wood. Look at this puny little fire here. That's all it wants to do for me. So I'm gonna have to take this apart and look at it because I want some nice big fires when we're pulled over on the river. This will just not do. I mean, good thing we're testing it out on the lake before we're on the river with not much of a fire. Well, I got the fire pit going. That would have been real sweet last night, but it'll do for this afternoon. A nice little fire pit on the lake, cook up some hot dogs or some brats on it, and it'll all be good.
time to bushcraft a little fire here. We're going to throw in, of course, our smaller pieces. Some are already charred. They're going to burn pretty good. A lot of this wood was left here by the last people, so that's very nice of them. We did bring our own because these forests are picked pretty clean. It's hard to find uh, hard to find any good wood around here. <clears throat> so give your fire a little bit of gas. That's going to help it get started. Don't cook on that until that burns off. But as always, don't keep the gas can close by when you're lighting. Don't pour gas onto a fire that's burning already. And actually, just try not to do anything I do. Now you're camping with Steve. Well, time to start the fire. And that's the first thing first in this temperature. But uh, what we're gonna do is nothing fancy this time. We're just going to use a bunch of paper towel or something because we left in a rush this morning. And we'll see. This is about the most real fire that we've ever started. <laughs> if, it, if it starts. Fire still, see? Yeah. Just a loot. Do it again. Hug to the world. The crazy neighbor salute. Yep. You perfected it. Yep, practice makes perfect. Let's see it again. I think that's how you know it's a slow news day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might work. All right. Yeah. For people who don't know, this is Reed, or Sticks as he's known. That's his nickname on the channel. And he's been in some of my other videos in the past out on the coast. So he he did a lot of the filming on the first boondocking documentary. Yeah, it's good to be back, Steve, uh, here in Elk Island National Park. Yeah. Um, haven't seen any wildlife yet. Okay. Well, that should probably work. And we'll start the business of hunkering down. So, fire's going. It was a little bit tricky to start this because the news crew was filming and everything, so we're normally a little bit better with that, but we had to move around and do different things and get different shots. So, anyway, fire time. This will be nice. Haha. <laughs> so with the paparazzi gone and a roaring fire, it's time to move on to more pressing issues. I think the easiest way to get this ox unstuck is just to Throw the whole thing in the fire, maybe burn that in first and I might be able to save the ox. We'll see. Alright, we're going to get the fire started. <clears throat> um, first you want to take your fire steel and uh, ferro rod, you got to throw that away and save it for a real emergency. Tuck it away in, uh, in the truck somewhere. <clears throat> and. Uh, what I use is uh, basically a home combination fire starter from readily available uh, ingredients. And uh, this should get, uh, should get it going. So you dump in your homebrew uh, fire starter and you take a torch And just get her started. And now you're camping with Steve. Everything is shoveled, and uh, in the back of the truck, it's pretty well ready to go tonight. So uh, I can't wait. I think I've earned a little bit of whiskey. Uh, you might know that I do. Good of a time as any to light a fire. 
Um, of course, you can't scavenge for wood here because that's highly illegal. And there's actually spots you can't walk in that are blocked off trying to regrow the trees uh, naturally. And the wood they sell feels pretty wet and heavy. But that's okay. As I was in the store and I picked up something that I tried the other day. Uh, oh, that's... This is, I think, Arbutus, maybe. Well, it's good wood, actually, when it burns. So, pull start fire. Look at that. Um, I tested it out. Uh, this end goes on um, on a log. So, I'll put a log in here. This one's ready to pull. Um, grabbed another one of the car. Uh, these, that's what they look like. And uh, no matches, windproof to 200 miles per hour plus. Uh, lights wet wood and burns up to 30 minutes. That's exactly what I need um, in everyday life. So, let's uh, pull this and see if it starts. Okay, that's ominous. Oh wow, you can really smell the sulfur. Okay, whoo. Okay, don't breathe that in uh, when you start these. Wow. And I think it's, whew, I think it's basically like a road flare with a bunch of that uh, wax stuff around it, that wax uh, sawdust mixture. I'll endorse this product. Uh, I don't know where to get it other than Canadian Tire, but there's, uh, probably somewhere else to get it. Oh yeah. What a time to be alive. Just goes to show you. If you could drop start a chainsaw, you can allegedly pull start a uh, fire in a hurricane. I'm gonna check out this free firewood situation because that's unheard of. I genuinely thought the days of free firewood were long gone. I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or if in the States it's gone that way too, but every campground seems to sell tiny bundles for about, you know, 10 bucks. And the worst part of it is a lot of them don't let you bring your own firewood in even. So pretty much the best part of camping is the fire. And if you want that, you're going to pay. I also have people ask about gathering firewood just in the bush. Nowhere around here is that even remotely legal. Every campground has got signs up warning you, don't scavenge firewood, don't look for it, big ticket if you do. Like if you were on Crown Land, you could do it, but I live so far from Crown Land. I drove an hour and a half to get here today to the only campground pretty much that's open and kind of remote. And Crown Land's a lot farther than that. Time to start a survivalist fire here to keep us warm. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I just like to follow the directions on the log and light both sides of the package. That should get that started and then we can put the wood on. That got her going nicely. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. This is what I have to deal with to light a fire. I don't have the technology that my good friend Steve does, but bear with me and this is how I'm gonna light it. We got this great store up here called Canadian Tire. 
And they sell these little things. They're made out of sawdust and wax. Stick it underneath here. I put a whole newspaper in here. I didn't even have a chance to do the crossword puzzle in it because I have to light this fire because Mrs. Crazy is saying, where's the fire? So, here we go. It's not very spectacular. I'm sensing a major fail here. Great, it's dripping on my thumb. Okay, there we go. Look, we have flame. Let's see what we can do here. No, oh, it might go. Oh yeah, she's gonna go. Getting back to one of my earlier problems, I uh, managed to get my axe stuck in this wood. So I figured the best way to get it out is just to burn it off. So I'm gonna stick this in here. Yeah, things work the way I want them to. I should just fall out and if I'm quick, I can save the axe. If I don't, well, at least the head will still be there. Here we are 10 minutes in and uh, it's not looking that good. So I'm going to take another one of these wonder sticks and see what happens. Let's just stick it in. Oh, there's some coals there. Let's see what happens here. Oh, great. It dropped right to the bottom where there's no flame. Okay, I'll get another one. Get a whole package, we're not going to run out. This is like really difficult. I don't know why anybody would waste their time trying to light a fire with these things. The struggle is real, folks. Oh no. That's a complete and utter fail. My kids would be so proud of me right now. Hi Jennifer, hi Ryan, hi Robbie, hi Nikita. I really do know how to do this. I've just been so spoiled hanging out with Steve Wallace that I forgot how to light a fire. It will come back to me. We'll let it go. Fire is finally going. I think we've accomplished our main goal. We still have to deal with my axe. So we're going to put the axe here and try to burn the wood off the axe and still save the axe. That should work. Oh, watch, the axe is going to fall out now. Here we are. We're about an hour in. I think this axe might come out now. Oh, look at that. We got the axe back. Oh, look, there's a little damage to the axe. Mrs. Crazy is not going to be happy. How about we just don't tell her? <sighs> we'll just put this out and maybe it'll hurt things. Oh, what a waste of beer. My goodness. Well, it'll still work for a while. <laughs> Don't burn my table. Oh, no. I melted the table. Mrs. Crazy is not going to be happy with me. Here, we'll just hide it right there and she'll never notice. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you like this kind of stupid stuff, feel free to subscribe. Have a good one.